Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It's been a little bit chilly at times recently and in particular there have been some cold nights but the spring equinox is just two days away at the time of filming this so can we expect something a little bit warmer in the coming days? Well let's have a quick look at how things may develop. Now here's a view at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 18th of March. We've got an area of low pressure down to the southwest, high pressure to the east and it's a mostly dry picture across the whole of the United Kingdom. As I run the sequence what we see is it stays dry in the short term but it's to the south, the southwest we need to look as we head towards the weekend because showers or longer spells of rain are moving northwards and they look set to affect all parts of the UK at times and the yellow shading there is indicating the potential for some heavy outbreaks of rain to be mixed in. I'll continue the sequence through the rest of the weekend and it's staying changeable further showers but then a ridge of high pressure builds in but towards the end another frontal system moves through it brings some further showery spells of rain southeastwards across the UK but by Wednesday v26 this computer model run at least is indicating that high pressure will once more be trying to build from the southwest and bring something a little bit more settled at least for a time. So lots taking place there. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. The UK just here and the green shading to start off with as I run this. What we see is some warmer air moves up for a time. We'll have a look at the temperatures in a moment and then it's quite a mixed picture through the rest of the week. Nothing too dramatic taking place. They're quite changeable but no extremes would appear to be showing up. Is that going to be the case or not? Well let's see some of the surface forecast charts for this period. Wednesday the 19th of March and at this point the UKV model, the data is from that which I'm using here. It's suggesting quite a mild or even warm picture in southern and central regions, 16 or 17 degrees as the max in the afternoon. Cooler as you head northwards into Scotland and Northern Ireland, but it's dry everywhere. And this is suggesting there will be a lot of sunshine as well, just a little bit of cloud in places. Forwards to Thursday, I've taken at face value, there's a bit more cloud here but temperatures have continued rising, 19 Celsius there in the London area and it's 17, 18, 19 really across much of southern and central Britain. It's a fairly warm picture. I just wonder if we could see 20 or even 21 degrees somewhere at this point. I think it's 21's unlikely but I wouldn't rule it out. Forwards to Friday and I'm running a sequence of the precipitation here because this is when things are beginning to change. We've got showers or long spells of rain which are moving northeastwards through the course of the day to affect many areas. But they do look, although heavy, patchy in places so some areas could be staying mostly dry. Temperatures still not too bad at all. 17 has been shown there in central and eastern parts of England even into Scotland 11, 12 or 13 Celsius and similar there in Northern Ireland. Then by the weekend that changeable theme is really establishing itself. We've got outbreaks of rain moving northeastward, showers in places and temperatures are dipping. The highest values in central and eastern parts of Britain 14 or 15. It's cooler there especially in Northern Ireland and Wales the southwest is actually quite chilly compared to the previous couple of days. Then into Sunday and Monday using data from the GF GFS model because the Met Office UKV doesn't run this far. Changeable I think would describe it showers on Sunday, patchy spells of rain in places and they're mostly dry on Monday with temperatures fairly close to the average by this point but very very important to emphasize don't focus on the details at this range I'm just using the charts to illustrate how things look like shaping up so don't take them literally uh, face value there could be showers on uh, Sunday or even on Monday the general theme 
is for it to be changeable. So as ever, if you're planning outdoor activities during the weekend, keep up to date with the short range forecasts. Another change which will be happening is the overnight lows will be climbing. We've got a very cold night to come, Tuesday into Wednesday. Minus six, I think, being shown there in the Scottish Glens. It wouldn't be surprising if we approach or get close to at least minus 10 degrees. It may turn out to be the coldest night until next autumn or even early winter. Thursday, still frosty in the north in particular, but then by Friday morning, the overnight lows are quite a lot higher by this point. The risk of frost receding as that more changeable pattern starts to establish. The Mogreps G temperature forecast for London illustrates the upward trend through the early part of the period. You can see maximums here, maybe 16 or 17. I think there is a tendency for Mogreps to maybe undercook for maximums just a little bit because these are these are averages actually rather than maximums so 18 19 degrees as i've been discussing is very possible in the london area and then as we go forwards the spread starts to increase the runs in the ensemble are going for different scenarios but the trend is downwards returning close to the average later on it's a similar picture in Inverness. It's worth noting as well that it could even be pleasantly warm for that part of the world. It's all relative for a time, maybe 15, 16 degrees there. So some of that milder, warmer air reaching all the way into Northern Scotland. Though later on, the trend is downwards as well. One other point maybe worth highlighting is that it could be quite windy at times. It doesn't look like that there are gonna be problems uh, with wind speed through the first week, but the Cardiff Mogreps G uh, graph illustrates the likely value. So quite breezy to start off with, then it's calmer, but through this period, the 21st to the 23rd, for some indications that winds will be strengthening as that more mixed weather uh, returns, low pressure starts pushing up from the southwest, and just a couple of runs in the ensemble there going for gusts of slightly over 50 miles an hour, but most of them are around this 30 mile an hour mark worth keeping an eye on to see how that plays out. Rainfall forecast aggregates for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models have been shown everywhere seeing at least a little bit of rain but the totals aren't enormous in any region. The ECM suggesting the wettest conditions are likely to be in Northern Ireland, Wales and southwestern England. The distribution on the GFS model on the right there is it's a little bit different, but the, the totals overall are not too dissimilar. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, they have increased now a little bit, but all in all, it's not especially wet. So even though we've got those changeable conditions returning through the weekend, there are some suggestions here that as we go beyond that period, it could be turning more settled or at least more settled periods start to develop once more. So in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 25th, the UK just there. And there is a kink in the isobars which is indicating a weather front moving southeastwards. It would be bringing outbreaks of rain. But I think of more note is that high pressure centered over the Azores is starting to build north eastwards. And the Canadian model shows high pressure also building out of the Azores, as does the German icon but, and it is quite a big but, the high pressure is building northwards towards Iceland, which is allowing a plunge of cold Arctic air to move southwards across the UK, so significantly different. The European ECM though has a high pressure building northeastwards. The artificial intelligence version of the same model has a high pressure centered a tad further west, which leads to a greater risk of showery conditions, especially in central and eastern counties. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, high pressure building out of the Azores. Taking them all together, they suggest that there could be showers or even longer spells of rain in parts of the UK at this time, but the signal is for high pressure to start having more influence again. 
it would therefore indicate a growing chance of drier and more settled periods. Does that continue to be the case as we head into and through week two? Of course, at this range, it is just about the general trends and probabilities and using the ensemble data to try and identify them. So here goes the 16 day GEFS plot for London. 850 HPA temperatures across the top, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean is staying close to the thick black line, the 30 year norm. With that said, there is quite a big spread between the individual runs. Some are bringing in relatively warm air, some are bringing in cool or cold air, and there is one which is bringing in very cold air. Indeed, it's dipping down to minus 10 at the 850 HPA level. But because it's only one out of 33, it's an unlikely development. It could well be showing something similar to what the ICON deterministic model was. Will there be much rain around? Well, rain spikes continue to appear and one or two of them are pretty big. On the whole though, the suggestion here is there should be a fair amount of a dry weather to be had. The two meter temperature data tables, mostly yellows through the days, maximums are between 11 and 15, the nighttime lows between six and 10 because the light green is the dominant color in these columns as we go through week two. It is worth highlighting, I think, that a significant amount of dark green is still showing up hence a risk of ground frost on some nights. Up to Manchester, it's going to be a very, very short visit this week, not because I've got a problem with Manchester, in, despite being a Yorkshireman, I think it's a great place, but the reason it's a short visit is because it's showing something very similar to the London chart. Likewise, with the two metre temperatures for Manchester, similar trends, albeit at a slightly lower level, so yellow in the majority only just to start off with 11 to 15 through the days but it's the dark green which becomes the dominant color 6 to 10s and the nighttime lows suggest for, that there is a greater risk of ground frost in this part of the world up to glasgow it's also similar to the manchester and london plots i'll highlight the rain risk because often you'll see far more rain spikes on this plot than on the London one in particular. That is not the case this week. Now when you compare it to the local averages it suggests that there is a good chance of uh, the northwest of UK being a little bit drier than is usual for the time of the year. If this is right of course. And the two meter temperature data tables six to ten through the days being dominant the nighttime lows mostly dark green and a significant amount of blue it's indicating a high chance of ground frost and a significant chance of air frost rainfall in more general terms the charts here show the uh, percentage chance of five millimeters or more falling on the first three days of week two it's moderately low on all of them, although the chart on the right hand side indicates a growing risk. You can see some light green shading in western Scotland, northwestern England and uh, Wales. They all indicate the weather's likely to be coming in from the west. And moving forwards to the next three days, the chance has increased a little bit. And again, the uh, light green shading is mostly in Western Britain and Northern Ireland. So the weather looks as though it's going to be coming in from the Atlantic, but maybe not in a vigorous way. Does the mean surface level pressure data table for York support the general idea? I think it does because there's a lot of yellow, especially through the first few days. And then later on the amount of orange grows as well. The yellow and oranges indicate close to or mostly above average surface pressure. Quite a lot of green as well. Those are runs which are going for low pressure but fairly shallow areas of low pressure. It's the blues and purples which indicate the deep and vigorous systems which we often get through the winter months. So I think it suggests a reasonable amount of dry periods through the second week. 
The uh, snapshot pressure chart from the GEFS for Friday the 28th, maybe a little bit less encouraging. High pressure is building northeastwards from the Azores, but some suggestions here of it staying more changeable or unsettled, especially in the north. But this is, of course, as I've just said, just for one day, the 28th, and over the week as a whole, it does seem to be a reasonable signal for dry periods to develop at times. So to summarise week one, it starts dry and temperatures trend upwards. In fact, it becomes rather warm. But the risk of showers or long spells of rain returns from Friday and through the weekend. Temperatures then start dipping back towards the average. Week two, mixed with close to or slightly above average temperatures. Showers or long spells of rain affect all parts of the United Kingdom potentially, but there should be a decent amount of dry weather. Patchy frost continues to be a risk, but mostly in the north. So uh, there we have it, quite a mixed selection of weather, nothing too extreme in terms of rainfall, winds or temperatures, at least that's how things appear at the time of recording this video. Spring-like conditions on some days at least. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Then if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already, because of course, if you do that, you'll not miss any of my future updates. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.